Red, the CNC cabinet is done. It's so big I can't even fit it in the screen, but contained inside the cabinet is dirty plexiglass window. CNC machine. Ah, uh, didn't take it off the inside. All right, so let's take a closer look at what we've got going on here. Or actually, a farther look, because I think it's huge. Let's get on the other side of the room here. So we got a shot of my messy workshop because I was building this thing. As you can see here, it is pretty tall. It goes almost all the way to the ceiling. It is almost eight feet tall. It is substantial. It's a two by four frame and contained within the walls of it is insulation. And I put little panels on the outside of that. I don't know if it was really a necessary step. Uh, probably would have been better to, hey, stop. Not talking to you, I'm talking to people. Probably would have been better to put uh, like foam padding on the inside of it. But the only stuff that I found was black and I need something lighter to give me uh, give me better light on the inside and then up here top side I'll give you a better look at this in a second this is the uh, dust containment system the vacuum and the hose for that pops out right in here and we'll drop down and plug into the machine with that dust boot that's hanging out right there Okay, I can't do that one-handed. Then I have plexiglass doors here that are mounted to your basic hardware store. Clickety-click things. That's a little drawing that I did with a pen when I first fired it up. And then there's storage underneath. I've got my new bandsaw. And let's go look at the top. All right, so top side here, I've got plexiglass installed as well with magnets. And inside is a vacuum system that installs onto the top of a bucket. And this might be something that I'm gonna have to redo, but you can see it's a two inch shop vac hose that goes into a one and a quarter draws through this entire bucket and then about five feet of hose those of you who know anything about suction and vacuuming will know that that's probably not enough power to do a really effective job um, this was able to vacuum up stuff pretty easily so i'm going to run it with the machine see how it does if i don't like it i'm either going to decrease the volume of that bucket create a little disc and drop that in there to essentially uh, minimize how much space that's actually having to draw through or I'm just gonna have to replace that with a bigger vacuum and as you can see on the inside it is insulated and I will show you guys a sound test in a second here to see if all this stuff was futile or not and then on the side here I have got a router speed control motor that is hooked up to the vacuum to control it and then this two-way toggle switch basically turns it on or allows you to turn that down and then all the wiring runs up through a hole there around the back of the bucket and then out over there and I'll create a little cover for that eventually it'll be one of the CNC projects and then this rat's nest of wires here is going to get squared away a little bit better as well all right so let's sound test this thing we're going to do just vacuum and then we'll close top and bottom and then we'll do router close the top and bottom and then we'll do both close the top and the bottom <laughs> Substantially quieter. Right. Let's 
let's kick the router on. I'll do a mid RPM. Quite a bit quieter. Turn it down. It's probably the RPM that I'll be using it at the most. Not bad. Alright, now let's do. Actually, don't even need to open. Let's do that and the uh, vacuum. It's not bad. I'm talking at a normal volume right now, and it's really not unbearable. And to so turn the RPMs down on this. It drones a little bit, but not too bad. Substantially better than a lot better than that. But then for and then for lighting I elected to go with these. Just your basic uh, Home Depot shop lights joined together with a common cord and power switches in the back. And the router, uh, CNC router, is pretty rad. I have done nothing more than this little file that it comes with where you write the name of the company. <laughs> it writes its own name. Um, but it's cool. It went together much easier than I anticipated. Uh, the only upgrade that I got for it is this. It's the Heavy Duty Z Plus motor. Um, it uses a screw drive to raise and lower this, whereas everything else runs off these high tension belts. Um, the original one that comes with it would be a high tension belt system for that. I didn't really want that. It looked like something that was going to be problem prone. Um, and it's less expensive to upgrade this with the machine than to upgrade that individually. Uh, the router that I went with is a Makita. Uh, basic, it was like a hundred bucks on Amazon, seemed to be the most affordable one. And I also like it because it has the wider RPM range of the routers that are out there. This one goes down to 10,000 RPM. I'm going to be cutting mostly brass. I need lower RPMs for brass cutting, but I wanted the freedom of having high RPMs if I want to do wood, which I'm definitely going to do to take the rest of this shop and turn it into something a little bit more organized than that. But that is it. That is what I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. And like with most of my projects, uh, I think that they're only going to take a couple of minutes or uh, a couple of days and they turn out to take a couple of weeks. Um, I'm not going to paint the enclosure. I'm going to leave it the color that it is, just this uh, basic almost pine color. Um, it's not pretty it's not meant to be pretty i actually kind of wanted to have something of an industrial look that's why i ended up doing uh this for attaching the hinge bolts they're just little machine screws and they have the nylon uh, locking in the back come on focus and then i wanted the plexiglass up there because i thought it looks kind of cool to see what was up there i didn't want this giant monolith to just have a piece of wood over the top of it with this mystery box on the top. I wanted to be able to see what it was doing up there. And um, the uh, top of this, the very top of this is actually hinged. So uh, it makes it easier to get stuff out of there if I need to. And one of my other goals was to make sure I used up all of my wood. Um, I didn't want a whole ton of scrap wood after this project. Um, that down there is basically it. That long thing back there is actually a piece of plexiglass. But um, I think that about wraps it up. Yeah, not gonna, not gonna paint this. It's like you put lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig, so might as well have this pig look like what it's supposed to look like. Uh, next videos, I will start using this thing. Start cutting out some stuff to make this more organized. Maybe putting a bunch of shelves up there. Uh, the calendar's probably going to audio, so I'm going to be putting uh, material organizing up and basically taking this workspace over here and getting the most use out of it that I can. Sorry, I was trying to be clever and I stepped on a piece of scrap wood with my bare feet because I'm dumb. And then down there is a new uh, miniature bandsaw that my mom gave me. She has a jewelry business, um, Flame Dancer Designs. The link is in the description. Check her out. Artistic, awesome, homemade 
jewelry and of my old band saw as much as I love it I don't have the room for it and it's gonna have to get sold so that's it in a nutshell um, see you guys on the next update thank you so much for tuning in